So next startup, um, I took a cab last uh, last night with uh, Evan, and uh, there were two guys who said, "Oh, are you going to the party?" Yes, we're going. So I'll oh, jump in the in the car, and they didn't know who we were, and we didn't know who they were. So um, they started talking about their their company, and in the end, uh, it was one of the startups that ended up here, and they paid for my cab. So um, I must say uh, I. I can't say anything about them because I'm, I'm biased right now because they paid 50 rifnias, rifnias to me. But give them a hand. Uh, it's a company called Flocktory, and they will explain how that works. There you go. Thank you for paying my cap, by the way. Thanks, Patrick. Oops, I hope I didn't break it. SaaS platform for social referral marketing. Uh, all very big buzzwords. So essentially, we try and we already succeed in using social networks, in using existing users to create new sales for social networks. I think the presentation is a little bit phony, but OK. So we are building our product step by step. So let me tell you what do we have today. A customer goes on to Amazon, let's say a Russian Amazon, and buys something. After the purchase, he's receiving a pop-up which says, give 5% discount to your friends. If they receive something, you will, if they buy something, you will get 200 rubles. All very simple. He's providing value for his friend at the moment where he has the highest exposure to the brand and the highest, expo uh, the highest loyalty to the shop. What do we provide out of this? We provide a system which integrates into any CMS within minutes, which gives the opportunity Magento, Shopify, whatever it is, or self-written, and gives every marketing guy the opportunity to set his own campaigns, set the triggers for the campaigns, for example, for price, for a certain um, group of uh, goods, or for a certain good, and gives them the opportunity to set the bonuses. What do you want to give? Money on the phone, money on the card, percent for next purchase, about anything you want. Everything very simple and customizable, no additional IT, design support. Afterwards, the marketing person controls all the visual elements which are responsible for uh, the communication with the client. How does the pop-up look? Uh, what uh, texts are written inside? And so everything. And afterwards, he starts the campaign. You can have one to one billion campaigns at the same time and you get all the analytics throughout the sales funnels. How many people saw it based on your triggers, how many people shared in which networks, how many traffic did it generate to your site, how many new sales did it generate, and most importantly, what's the ROI from this tool, and what's the ROI from every additional user. Today, we're in closed beta, and we are used by about 50 customers who are uh, strong market players in different segments. And uh, I know the numbers are up too, but it very, very much depends on the shop size, on the different campaigns, but most importantly on the segments. In furniture, we make two additional percent in sales. In uh, travel, it's different. In fashion, it's also different. So this moves along. But essentially, that's, for us, it's only the start. That we needed to start with something to build our spaceship. So um, where are we heading? We have three dimensions in our business. Geography, not so important right now. Functional and the depth dimension. On the functional dimension, essentially, we want to be a referral marketing platform. So once one shop solution for any marketing which has to do with referrals. So today it's post-checkout, pre-checkout, standalone, email, everything manageable out of one office. Um, but there is much, much more to it, and that's the really interesting part. Today, even today from my database, I can tell you I can connect each single purpose, uh, purchase to each single person who shared, to where he shared, how many people did he generate, how many additional sales did he generate. Now we are starting in a couple of weeks to take social profiles. With these social profiles, we are connecting amazing data data of history of purchases with social data. You all know network theory, six degrees of separation and so on. To make it uh, very simple, there are different kinds of people. Simple people, connectors, influencers, and so on. Because we actually see the result from the people, 
how many sales they generated, and analyzing their profiles, we will be able also to forecast these profiles. Already today, I can give you the list of your influencers, top brand evangelists, top sellers, and so on. But in the future, we will be able to forecast this. It gives you amazing analytics. You can do this database, you can do really cool things with it. Um, so, but besides this, there is actually another very strong asset. As you can imagine, the functional tool itself is worth it. The functional tool creates value for e-commerce clients. It can also create value for no offline clients. But the shops we are integrated, the number of shops we will be integrated with, the database, the number of transactions we see, and the number of profiles we have is in itself real gold. So yes, that's about it. That's right on time. Give him a hand. I was practicing, Patrick. You had five seconds left. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah, that's good. So uh, Andreas, you have a question? Yeah, no, first of all, very good pitch. Um, I'm very impressed. It's a clear USP, a clear proposal. You know, uh, you explained exactly what you're doing. I think it's a very good approach, um, precise to the point. Um, I think it's a very interesting uh, market segment you're tracking. Um, you're also having a very clear value proposition. Uh, what I really like is that you uh, focus on the post-purchasing process because every merchant uh, will not um, accept a tool which interrupts uh, the buying process uh, while you know the checkup process is going on. Um, so that's what I really like very much. Uh, please uh, let us know a little bit about your monetization uh, model. So. In the beginning, it's a SaaS platform. So first we thought that it needs to be revenue share, at least for large, and we, we split our business in four parts, small, medium, large, and enterprise clients. First we thought that with clients like enterprise and large, for example in Russia, let's say Otto, um, it should be uh, CPAs based. But essentially we decided not to do it, why? Because we are not controlling the customer experience, we are not setting the campaigns. So it's a subscription model, but with very, very clear results. So free trial, let's say, for enterprise clients of two months, and afterwards they see how much sales we created. So pure subscription-based model monthly. Uh, it may be that someday in the future it will go to revenue share, but let's see. Tell us more about your client strategy. I mean, clearly you have big clients, medium clients, small clients. What's your strategy? Who you want to target, why? How are you going to do it? Thanks. Um, I think it very much depends on the market. Let's take Russia. In Russia, 25% of the market, of the e-commerce market, which is our first market to focus on, is uh, about 40 people, 40 companies. Yes, about 42 we counted. So this means that for me it is much easier to sell to this part through direct B2B sales, ex clearly explaining my value proposition, clearly solving their problems. Let's take now Germany. There you have about 100, um, let's, for, for Russia, small and medium company, small and medium businesses are, I don't know, 19,000 about companies, and they make all together 50% of the market. So for markets like Russia, we focus on direct B2B sales. For markets like Germany, we focus on applications. Magento, application, downloadable, pushed through marketing, through this uh, CMS. Shopify application. We have already like five or six of them. Uh, Sergey, as you have knowledge about the Russian market, could you, uh, could you uh, add something, a question? I, I, I don't understand the e-commerce uh, very much. I think Brian understands it much better. He will ask much better questions. And, but do you have a specific question about Russia or whatever? No? Okay. Brian, you understand this, right? No, just, um, I suppose I have two questions. Um, first question, you know, a lot of companies have tried to do this in the U.S. and haven't gotten much traction, and I'm curious to know why. My second question is, in the event that it was market timing and suddenly these companies, including yourself, do get a lot of traction, what, what's going to prevent the existing CMS vendors or the existing shopping cart vendors or even Facebook and Twitter from building these fairly lightweight applications for their advertisers? I hear four questions. I will start to answer all of them. If not, Brian, you can remind me. Um, Facebook, the simplest one. We have cross-platform solution. Facebook is infrastructure, and of course they can do it in Facebook, but it will be limited to Facebook. 
in the Russian market, we have for today integrated with five networks. And we see that Facebook, it's only in Russia, I think, seven and a half million people. That's nothing. I mean, they are growing very fast, but it's nothing. Adna Klasnik, if contacted Twitter, sending per email, who is integrating with those? Um, now, uh, to what will prevent the CMS companies? CMS companies are very different, uh, each one. There are companies which focus on large enterprises. There's companies which focus on middle and on small. Let's take Shopify. For them to do such a complex solution would be, uh, first, a lot of time. It would be a separate team because it's a separate line of business integrating with all the f networks, providing all this value, connecting it, and so on. And it's a huge analytics business. And um, they would, it would be only partial functionality because they focus on small ones. Magento would do it differently. Everybody would do it differently. We provide a cross-platform solution, and you can have different functionality. We can switch on the, and off the functionalities for different customers. I hope I answered your question and didn't forget one. OK, thank you very much. I have a last question for you. Are you looking for funding? Yes, very much. OK, and you're, uh, how much are you looking for? One and a half. One and a half euros? Rivnas? Yeah, if you have, <laughs> it takes two, but uh, for the cap yesterday, no. What, what, uh, one, one and a half, half million dollars. One and a half million dollars. That's, that's quite a lot, right? Ambitious. But we have something to offer. OK, that's good. And you, you, you set up a lot of talks here with investors? I had a bunch of meetings yesterday. Today, um, most of the investors came a little later <laughs> after yesterday. And um, uh, you're a little late on time, so I was waiting. So I, I will speed up now. OK. Uh, thank you very much. Um, good pitch. Uh